Yo, what up? It is the Ant-Man channel. Welcome. It is the, <laughs> it's gonna say Thursday, Friday, the 14th of March, 2014, and I'm your host, Ant-Man. And I got an article in front of me here from two days ago that I just, like, I was like, oh, I was about to read this other article right now, but then I saw this one, and I was like, I've had it for two days, so I thought I'd read it, because it's, I thought it was very interesting, since, you know, that I like to post a lot of videos about knowledge, science, then you, you know, that I like to read a lot of articles like this. Conservatives and Christians, the anti-science idiots. Idiots? By Susan Olden. All right. <clears throat> I like the little picture they have here, too. It's like a stuffed animal, the sheep, wearing a pyramid-shaped tinfoil hat. I like that. Uh, we've all been there in the midst of a discussion, usually online, about, well, any subject, and then inevitability, or and it inevitably evolves to, you conservatives or Christians or both are so stupid. It's science. You are so such an anti-science moron. Except we aren't scapegoating an entire class of people as stupid or moronic in order to silence them and push your agenda in unquestionably wrong, or is unquestionably wrong. Substitute African American or Jewish or Muslim in place of conservative or Christian, and the outcry would be deafening. Conservatives, specifically Tea Party conservatives, are actually more proficient in scientific knowledge than liberals. Yes, that's actually a proven fact. It's a study. A Yale professor, Dan Cahan, a liberal professor who did the study by his own admission to prove conservatives are idiots, did an analysis of 2,000 adults and found that while liberals are slightly more science literate than those who lean conservative, actual conservatives, especially those who are a part of the Tea Party movement, are much better versed in science than those who didn't. <laughs> uh, than those who didn't. His findings met the conventional threshold of statistical significance. Strike one. Christians, by and large belief, with some variation as to definition of days, that God made the universe and everything in it, and he did it out of nothing. Science backs us up. How? The Big Bang Theory. Specifically, who came up with it? And who is now convinced it is the truth? Or it is truth. So yeah, <clears throat> did you know that the physicist mathematician that came up with the theory George Lemaitre was a Catholic priest? He described the beginning of the universe as a bust, a burst of fireworks, comparing galaxies to the burning embers spreading out in a glowing or in a growing sphere from the center of the burst. He believed this was the beginning of time, and that it was a day without yesterday. In two thousand and eight, or I mean. <laughs> In 1998, two teams of scientists in Berkeley, California found data that proved that Lemaitre was right. One movement, or one moment, there was nothing in the next, the universe. The 1999 proof convinced even Stephen Hawking. Prior to this, Hawking believed that the universe exploded, contracted upon itself, and then exploded again. Meaning it wasn't a one-time creation. After the proofs came out from Berkeley, he changed his mind again. The one who discovered it, a Catholic priest. Strike two. Don't believe the theory of evolution as Darwin framed it, and you are a troglodyte. The problem is that much of Darwin's theory has been scientifically debunked. One was the explosion of life in the Cambrian era. Darwin himself agreed that this era was quite the challenge to his theory. However, the biggest debunk is DNA. DNA is an incredibly complex thread of information. It contains code that is more eloquently written than anything humans have ever written. DNA actually has the ability to recycle previously set aside strings of code, or junk DNA, when it's needed. Scientists who have studied the DNA of all kinds of animals, including ours, have been unable to find a DNA link that shows that we evolved from another species. Scientists have already made the observation that DNA is too complex to have accidentally happened, and quite a number of them, peer-reviewed, think that the very disparaged intelligent design theory is sound. Strike three. Has anyone noticed how the global warming alarmists have been scrambling like ants in the fall to try and salvage their facts after this incredibly cold winter? It certainly had me chuckling, but yes, we moronic deniers know that climate naturally and <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's really good. Uh, cyclically? Cyclically? Sorry, that's kind of hard for me to say. Cyclically. Change. The left has the media to back them up and enforce their facts. The MSM have shamefully ignored over a thousand scientists who rebuke 
man-made climate change, calling them a handful or a few. Some media outlets even go as far as to refuse the acknowledged, or refuse to acknowledge the scientific credentials of scientists who are skeptics. Scientists like Dr. Fred Singer, an environmental scientist for 23 years at the University of Virginia, University of Maryland, of Miami, and the Environmental Protection Agency, Dr. Roy Spencer, who was a senior scientist for climate studies for NASA, principal research scientist at the University of Alabama in Huntsville, and has been funded by various government agencies, including the Department of Energy, Dr. Jay Lair, the Heartland Institute Science Director with degrees from Princeton University and the University of Arizona, just to name three. There are over 1,350 peer-reviewed papers debunking all of the global warming climate change facts, quote-unquote. Strike four. You don't even get strike four, but you, you have strike four here. According to Planned Parenthood's president, Cecil Richards, the question of when human life begins is irrelevant to the discussion of abortion. Why? Because it is a baby? Because if a baby is not alive until it's born, then killing it is... <laughs> killing it isn't problematic, except... It is alive, and science supports that fact. When sperm meets egg, two separate threads of DNA combine to form a completely different being. If a single cell organism is alive, or a microscopic multi-cell organism like a bacterium is alive, then a single cell is alive and is still alive as it splits itself exponentially until it has a heart, brain, and a nervous system in just a few weeks. Killing it is ending a life. Strike five. Being conservative or Christian or both doesn't make you anti-science. Christian scientists have made great discoveries, come up with great theories, and in fact invented the scientific method. Try, try arguing facts, liberals, and real ones. Name calling just makes you look like someone who can't win an argument. Boom! You guys got destroyed by this woman, this beautiful woman, Suzanne Olden. She just destroyed you liberals today, I'm sorry. That's gonna be a hard one to walk off today, you guys. But anyways, subscribe to my videos. Uh, God bless you, and man, awesome.